Blood, the king of the vampires, finds himself at odds with the agency while Spawn tracks down a mysterious woman who still has has her powers and also wants to take Blood down. We're going to talk about it right here in our review of Spawn number 352, season 3. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Spawn number 352 from Image Comics. But before we jump in, let's talk about the credits. This issue is written by Rory McConville with script assist by Todd McFarland. Art by Brett Booth with inks from Adelso Corona. Colors by Robert Nugent. Letters by Tom Porzachowski. And the main cover, cover A, is drawn by Carlo Barberi. Before we jump into this issue, let's talk about what happened in the previous issue, Spawn number 351. Spawn went to a bar or a pub frequently populated by demonic creatures and supernatural beings, and he was desperately looking for a cure for vampirism. Don't know exactly why, not sure exactly what he was after it for, but we do know that he wants it very badly and he's willing to beat up or <laughs> put down anybody that crosses paths with him until he gets the information he's looking for. Meanwhile, we know that Blood, who is the king of the vampires on Earth, has been taking advantage of the opportunity that the Dead Zone has encompassed the entire planet, and he's hunting down all the angels and demons and anybody from either one of those realms to consolidate power on him and his legion of vampires by eliminating any of the people that posed a threat or were competition before the events of the Heaven Hell War. That brings us to spawn number 352. We start off with a prologue where we find two demons who are used to inhabiting human forms. Now they can't be in human form anymore and they're sitting there acting like demons in this kitchen. They used to be an old lady and man couple. Uh, and now they're unfortunately they can't turn back. They're, tr they're making phone calls. They're trying to find out what's happening. And while as they're frantically trying to figure out what's going on and why they don't have their powers anymore and they're stuck in their demonic forms, a group of vampires breaks through their window, hunts them down, and kills them in a very brutal fashion. And that leads into a montage of sorts where we see that just after the events of the Heaven Hell War, once the Dead Zone had encompassed the entire planet, Blood immediately put his plan in action by hunting down every denizen of Heaven and Hell to eliminate them to consolidate his power. We find out that after the first day, once the Heaven Hell War has, has ended and Nyx is now on the throne of Hell, that about 40% of the forces of Heaven and Hell on Earth have been eliminated. By the end of the week, it was up to 70%. So it is a brutal hunt from start to finish where blood is just taking everyone out, regardless if they're good, they're evil, if they have offspring or not, it doesn't matter. He's been consol he's been not consolidating, but he's been compiling a list of all the members of heaven and hell that have been taking up residence on earth. And as soon as the opportunity uh, presented itself, he sent his legions out and he's been slaughtering everyone that he can find. The remaining 30%, however, of course, are the tough ones to kill, the ones that are just not going to lay down and take it. So now we catch up to where we left off with Spawn in the previous issue. When we last we left Spawn, he knowingly entered a trap by vampires because he was hunting folks down who may know where Blood's location is. When it seemed like he might have been cornered and, and overwhelmed because, he, again, he doesn't have his powers, uh, there, a mysterious sort of armored and masked woman shows up and she starts fighting the vampires that have surrounded Spawn. Now it appears she has her powers, but he's but it's not clear why or what kinds of powers uh, outside of she has enhanced strength and speed and, and everything else that you might expect from somebody who might be either an angel or a demon. And so the fight uh, goes on pretty, uh, pretty, <laughs> pretty energetically. Um, the vampires seem to fight back, but the woman it quickly overpowers them and Spawn jumps in with his mortal strength as much as he can. And the one vampire is completely cut down, literally cut in half. And the other vampire is wounded and captured. She starts questioning him. And that's where we kind of get into this scenario where Spawn is really confused about how there's somebody's left who has powers, even though nobody from heaven, hell, heaven or hell has powers. So he's kind of confused about, did heaven find a workaround? Is the effects of the dead zone wearing off? There's a lot of confusion in his mind, but he's eager to find out. But this woman, when she's questioned by Spawn, she basically backhands him <laughs> across the room and takes off with the lone vampire because she wants to find blood as much as Spawn does. We jump forward a little bit and we catch up with Blood, who is in his house in Germany. 
and he's speaking to a messenger from the agency, which we now know from the Scorch title that is being that it's being run by Jason, the resurrected and returned Jason Wynn. This armored uh, individual who isn't given a name is basically delivering messages and saying, you've got to get your act together. You've got to stop sending us recruits who are subpar because we're trying to build an army just as much as you are. And we're not going to take inferior material. And Blood's basically saying, oh, I'll look into it. Uh, but you're no threat to me. Jason Wynn's no threat to me. I'm the true power here right now on Earth. Uh, so I'll message received and I get the hell out of my house. And when he, when Jason Wynn leaves his office and goes into another the room, he speaks to an individual who's been monitoring assorted situations around the Earth. And, J and he gets information that, yes, Spawn is on the move. He visited the bar called Purgatory in the last issue. And now he's on the hunt for Jason Blood, which Blood has expected. So we know that the uh, forces are at play, they're all moving, and now they're all aware that Spawn is on the move and he's hunting blood down. We cut back to Spawn, who, unbeknownst to the mysterious woman that he encountered in, during the vampire fight, uh, placed a tracker on the vampire that she took off with, uh, that she was apparently going to, or intended to interrogate. Spawn tracks her down to a warehouse, but he finds that the vampire uh, has been killed that the tracker is disabled and Spawn has no choice, but he reaches out to Terry and says, I need intel on this location. Give me video, give me surveillance, give me anything you got that tells me who's been coming in and out because I need to find this woman to find out, A, how does she have powers and B, why is she tracking blood and C, is she going to be getting in my way or is this something we can do to work together? So he starts uh, dreaming up in ways of, of figuring out how to track this woman down, start searching the warehouse. But so far, his information comes up short. And the last scene is sort of an intermingled montage of what looks like innocent people that are running through a, a bunker or some kind of building trying to get away from somebody who is very terrifying. And then that last moment, at the very last page, we get the big wow moment that shows us exactly why Spawn is looking for a cure for vampirism because an old friend by the name of Eddie Frank is now in service to blood and he needs to cure him uh, before he does too much damage. And from the looks of it, that's going to be a really tough fight. What do we like about Spawn number 352? This is actually one of the better issues in the series for, for quite some time, aside from issue 350, which was the big milestone issue. Um, great pacing, great action. Um, the mystery pieces that were dro dropped in 351 are bearing fruit in 352. The, the mystery of who's who and what's what that starts to fill in. You understand, now you understand what Spawn is after regards, with regards to the vampirism cure why that's a big deal. Uh, you also see that Eddie Frank, who's returned as now Reaper, is really a devastating force to be reckoned with. Plus the mystery of the woman who has powers, even though nobody from heaven or hell does, is intriguing because if Spawn can figure out how she has powers and why, it's something, can she get, can he get it on it or not? Can they become an ally or not? Is there been a workaround or not? Trying to figure all that stuff out. So Mysteries started in 351 are starting to bear fruit. They're starting to come together. And the answers are just as interesting as the mystery that was originally dropped. So overall, this is a really strong issue. And some really big action set pieces. Some of it is gory and violent and bloody, which makes sense when you're talking about a vampire-centric story. So this is a really well-done issue. What didn't we like about the issue? The one sticking point, and it's just a nitpick, but it was an irritating nitpick, is when the agency's messenger who looks like he could be a hunter or a soldier of some type is not named. We don't know who he is and why he's there or where, what he is because he's completely masked almost from head to toe. You do see his eyes and you can tell that there's some flesh under there, but you don't know if he's a, a some kind of derivative clone of overt kill or if he's some kind of cyborg or we don't know anything about him and you would at least think you'd get a name or something something that we could track it back to so this might be a character that just personally i'm not familiar with that i have to go back in the <clears throat> annals of spawn's history to figure out but the fact that that character wasn't named or referenced in any way he's just there and talking as though everybody knows each other and we're kind of sort of late to the conversation just takes you out a little bit it's a little irritating but overall not a bad problem just some minor nitpick 
let's switch gears and talk about the art a little bit. Brett Booth is now officially on the title, uh, at least for the foreseeable future, and it looks fantastic. Uh, his ink, his pencils are great. Adelso Corona's inks are great. Uh, the compositions, the character designs, especially when you see Reaper, he's huge. He's intimidating. He's gross because there's some gore and blood around him, and it looks fantastic. So overall, uh, thumbs up to big thumbs up to Brett Booth and the entire art team. They did a fantastic job on this issue. Final thoughts: What do we think about Spawn number three fifty two? Uh, great action, uh, great mysteries, and the pieces from the mysteries from the first issue have now borne fruit and given us new mysteries to think about. So now you feel like you're moving forward. The story has purpose and direction because now we understand Spawn's motivation and the uh, mystery of the m woman who has powers when nobody else does is also more. So it's more mystery upon mystery. The action's great. The art looks fantastic. And overall, this is a really solid issue from start to finish. Possibly one of the strongest Spawn issues we've read in a while. Therefore, we're going to give Spawn number 352 from Image Comics a 9 out of 10. It's a good score. It's a deserved score. And let us know what you think. Do you like the Spawnverse comics? Which is your favorite title? Is the main one your favorite? Or do you like one of the ancillary ones like King Spawn or The Scorched? Let us know in the comments section. We'd love to hear what you have to say and think about this. Otherwise, uh, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that bell for notification. And if you like more reviews like this one, please stay tuned through the outro.